This is a fearless special presentation. Well, hello. Today, I am going to interrupt the tips and talks flow, and we are going to do a tips and talks combo. What I mean is I'm going to give you some tips and a little bit of a talk all in one episode because today is such a special day. It is my first ever book launch. I had my book launch team send in some questions that they wanted to know about the book writing process. And I told them that no questions were off limits and that I was willing to answer just about anything. And they sent in such great questions, even some juicy ones. So I plan to answer as many of those questions as I can today on the podcast. But one final thing I want to tell you about before we get started, I do kind of have a really special bonus that is just precious to my heart. Throughout this episode, it's going to get interrupted by prayers from my closest friends and family. Now, the heart behind these prayers is for you to join in and believe God for all the wonderful things that God has in store for my book, Nervous Breakthrough, because here at Fearless Unite, we believe in the power of prayer. So I hope this episode inspires you to dream big to follow the call that God has on your life for you, and to never give up. Father, I pray for each and every person who reads this book, that it rescues people who are in bondage to fear and anxiety, that this book is used by God to create miraculous breakthrough in every reader's life, that this book equips readers to live differently for the kingdom from this point forward. In Jesus' name, amen. I am so thankful to my book launch team. They have been wildly supportive and so encouraging, and their questions were so good that I had a really hard time narrowing them down. So, I mean, I really could have done like an eight-hour podcast on this. Now, I'm not going to do it that long. I'm going to try to keep it around 35 to 45 minutes, but for real, it was such great questions. So here's what I did. I separated the questions that I'm going to tackle into three categories, professional, practical, and and personal. So I'm going to start with the professional questions. So um, some of these questions kind of came in and they were all sort of similar. So Danielle, Teresa, Karen, Leslie, Avery, these are kind of all of your questions in one. So there was three big questions that came in. It was, did you pitch the book idea or did someone approach you about the book idea? Uh, Did you get an agent or an attorney to help you broker the book deal? And then did you get an outline approved or a chapter approved before the deal was final? These are such great questions. So I'm just going to kind of tell you my journey. And as I kind of give you the journey, I think it's going to break down the answers to all of these. So The dream of Nervous Breakthrough actually dropped into my heart and I have it journaled from 2015. I was with my mentor and she had a lot of writing experience. And as we were just kind of talking through things, she just kind of gave me like this vision of like, you could do this too. And I remember the actual name, Nervous Breakthrough, dropped into my heart and I journaled it because I just thought I I have to make sure that I remember this. And so anyway, that's 2015. And then fast forward to about two years ago, um, I received an email from the Lisa Turkhorst team and she was starting something called a boot camp book proposal group. And and basically what they did was is they taught you how to start a book proposal. Now at this time, I, I, I didn't know what a book proposal was. I didn't, I didn't know how to write anything. And I saw it come through my email and it was one of those like, you need to pay attention to this. You know, have you ever had something like that where you're just like, oh, I'm supposed to pay attention to this. And so basically what wound up happening was even though I knew I was supposed to t- pay attention to it, I just threw away the email. And then I had a friend reach out to me. And uh, this was several weeks after I received it. And she said, Christy, I think you're supposed to look into this. And I just thought, oh my gosh, wow. So anyway, I came to my husband and it it was an investment to be able to be in it. Not to mention they were only taking a hundred people. Now this is Lisa Turkhorse. I mean, she's got 
people all over the world that follow her, you know, book journey. So I just, I also had just big doubts. There's no way that even if, you know, I do make this investment that I'll even get chosen for it. So I go to my husband, I tell him about him. I tell him about how the investment's going to be. I'm like, it's going to be like a a, a big process too. Like I got to be committed to this. It'll be like a 12 week journey. And they say that they want you to commit at least 10 to 15 hours a week to the course. So, you know, I had to really weigh that out. So uh, my husband says, you know what? I think you should, I think you should give it a try. So I just literally on a whim at the very end of the deadline, I submit my application to this um, boot camp book proposal, you know, with Lisa Turkhorse. And I just thought, what, whatever, you know, and I do it and I receive a message back like within a day and it's like, congratulations, you've been accepted. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> you know, have you ever done something in life and you're like, there's just no way. And then when you get accepted, you're like, wait, huh? So then it was just this journey of like, oh my gosh, I, you know, like, oh, okay. And so I go through this incredible course with these amazing people that I meet and they teach you how to, um, you know, prepare and produce an incredible book proposal. So what I didn't realize was, um, if you're going to get traditionally published, there's two ways to publish a book. You can do it through self-publishing or you can do it through traditional publishing. And if you're going to do tra- traditional publishing, there's a whole process that you have to adhere to. And basically, you have to have a solid, good book proposal first. You have to have a great platform, which means that they're going to take a look at your followers on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. They're going to combine all of that. They're going to ask you how many email subscribers you have. That's a, that's a huge thing in the publishing world. And if you have a good solid platform, then chances are a literary agent will pick you up. And you have to have a literary agent to be able to pitch your book proposal to a publisher. So there's all these lines that you that you have to work through. And so I graduate from the boot camp. And because I think of just the name on the boot camp, which was Lisa Turquoise, there were literary agents that were interested in hearing from us. So I got to interview with two literary agencies and Mary Demuth was one of them. And I wound up choosing her and, uh, she was able then to take my book proposal and put it in the correct format and then pitch it to publishers. So, um, at that point, uh, we went kind of down the list and that was, uh, an up and down situation because you get more rejections than you get yeses, obviously. And we got down to the very end of the wire where I almost didn't have anybody interested at all. And then, uh, Leafwood Publishing believed in our project believed in my project and they said yes and that's that's how I got the publisher to sign off and they already know what you're going to write about because you have to submit three sample chapters and an entire book proposal now when we talk about a book proposal this isn't just like a one page report this is like 25 to 30 page report on the intricacies and everything you plan and market research and I mean it's it takes a long time to put together a good book proposal. But by the grace of God, we had a publisher interested and that's how I got the book deal. So then, you know, we had some questions that said, well, what is the contract for? Well, it was, I was contracted to write about the book that was in my book proposal, which was Nervous Breakthrough. And I had to give 55,000 words to them at a specific time. So uh, that's kind of how that whole contract deal got started. So a next question that came in was, how did they determine how much you would get paid? Now, this is a juicy question, isn't it? <laughs> so the publishers have a formula based on your based on your platform and how many email subscribers and and they look at that and they go okay based on what we think she has in followers and what we can bring to the table we think she's going to sell x amount of books so basically they give you an advance for what they think you're going to be able to sell and then you get an advance in two installments. So one, when you sign the contract and say, yes, you're going to do it. And then the second installment of it, once you turn in your finished completed manuscript. And then uh, sometimes they'll work in like bonuses. So I'll get a bonus 
of a little bit of money if I sell over what they think I'm going to sell. And then you get paid out royalties once you meet that advance number as well, the the amount that they think you're going to sell. Now, I think people think that authors make crazy ton money. <laughs> and and the reality of that is it's just not true. So um, the average first time author gets a $10,000 uh, advance. And I will just tell you in full disclosure, my advance was nowhere near that amount of money. So um, you don't step into writing a book and expect to make a ton of money because the royalties are anywhere between 80 cents and one, like up to a dollar for every book you sell after you meet your, um, you know, your advance. So you're just, you're not making a ton of money. But here's the thing. I I didn't say yes to this project because I was trying to get rich. I said yes to this project because I knew God was calling me to do it. Um, so then the next question is people, are, how can we support this project? Like what, what is the best way to support Fearless and you through this? Well, first and foremost, understand that Fearless is a nonprofit organization and we were able to get a wholesale price on the book so that we could sell it at retail. So here's what's so beautiful. Um, Fearless gets to make a little bit of profit off of this book and it goes right back into our ministry so that we can keep on pumping out programming and help into our community for people that are struggling with fear and anxiety. So I think that is a beautiful thing. So one of the best things you can do is if you are local or you're going to a fearless event and I bring the books there, purchase it through us. That is going to help us tremendously. Um, There's a few places around locally in the St. Louis area that we've put the book out to. Go there and purchase the book there. That is really going to help us out. Now, if you're not local, the best way to do it is order it through Amazon. And you might ask us, well, why aren't, why isn't Fearless selling books to non-local people? We just don't have the manpower. We don't have enough people in our staff to be able to mail out books and ship out books. So it's just really easier if you're not local to just purchase it through Amazon and do it that way. The other way to support it would be to buy a book for someone else or just keep telling people about it. I'm I'm praying that the ripple effect of this book will just be far reaching uh, long after I'm not even in this world anymore. And that's the beautiful part about writing a book. The other thing you can do to support it would be to review it. If you purchase it on Amazon, then write a review. That that helps so very much. The next question was, how many rounds of edits do you have? Well, this is a really great question because first you meet with like your acquisition editor and he just helps you or she helps you with the flow. Do the chapters make sense? Is there maybe some stuff you need to cut? Maybe some stuff you need to add? Um, you know, just that kind of thing. So you go through that edit first and then the next one is like grammar, sentence structure, and they're moving things around, making sure everything does make sense. Um, that one I felt like was the most tedious because you get a Microsoft Word document back with trillions, <laughs> like for me, of so many mistakes, and you have to go in and accept. Um, but they make it really easy because there's a tracking process on it, and my, uh, my editor was phenomenal. I really enjoyed it, and they did a great job of making sure that my grammar, my se- sentence structure, and everything made sense. And then the last edit was the final overview. So this one was really exciting because they send it back to you, and it's typeset the way it's going to look in the book. So it's out of Microsoft word now and into like the PDF of the way it's really going to look. And for me, when I laid my eyes on it, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is it. Like, this is the way it really looks. It's so fantastic. So then you just look at spacing. You look at, you know, is there any final errors? This is not a time to make big changes. This is just like, oops, we forgot something right here, you know, and then you, you, you turn back those final edits. So it's really like three main editing processes. Okay, how did you get the idea for the art and the book cover? Oh, I love this question. I think this was Sierra uh, asked this question. So I actually had this vision of like coming out of darkness into the light. And I originally thought it was like a woman in a fetal position and then kind of breaking through to peace. And I actually got uh, the, the the designer sent something very similar to that in, but then they also sent me what the cover is right now. And it was one of those things where it was like, 
the girl in the fetal position coming to light, it was just too much on the front cover. And what I felt like the designer did um, so beautifully was just the woman looks like she had a breakthrough and that she's walking in the light. And that's what I wanted. And there was just a little few tweaks. Like for example, she had some daisies in her hair and I, I wanted it to be lilac because that fits me and fits, you know, the peaceful, calm, um, thought process anyway. So she wound, he wound up putting lavender in her hair instead. But the book design process I have heard is really difficult for a lot of authors. But for me, it felt so peaceful and so incredible. And I am so thankful to our, to my designer because I felt like he nailed it. He did an amazing job. Okay. So last question in the professional category, what is your advice that you would give to somebody that would want to write a book someday? And this came from a lot of people, Sierra, Shelby, Becky, a lot of other people asked this question too. I would say, wow, congratulations that you even have that dream on your heart. I think it is a calling from God and it's, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. So first and foremost, decide, do you want to traditionally publish or do you want to self-publish? Self-publish, you're responsible for everything. And that would be incredibly difficult. But then traditionally publishing, you would have to make sure that somebody says, yes, you would need to get a literary agent. And then that lit agent would have to be able to pitch your idea to traditional publishers. So I think if you do think that the traditional route is what you want to do, then you have to have a solid book proposal, 100%. So I would recommend like taking a book proposal course. I don't, I think Lisa Turquoise, she's still doing hers. There's lots of other great book proposal uh, courses. Uh, Mary Demuth, my, my literary agent, she actually has free resources on her website that you can go and take a look at, but I will link some more in the show notes as well. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much, God, for this beautiful book, Nervous Breakthrough, coming into the world. And we just praise you, God, for um, the work that you have done in Christy's life and how she realized through her terrible trials of her nervous breakdown that you were able to work in and through her Um, to allow her to come to a nervous breakthrough that is now being used in your world to bring you glory. And I pray, God, that would be an encouragement to each person that reads this book, that they realize you are there guiding them along their story and the same can happen to them, God. And so I pray for surrender um, for people's lives as they're reading this, that they realize just when we stop and release it to you, um, when we're weak, you get to become strong. And you use that. You turn everything back um, to bring good in our lives. And I, I pray that the same thing would happen to each person that reads this. And if it's not them going through nervous, anxious things, that it would be a resource that they can use to their friends or family or other people they know just to put it in their hands as a beautiful guide to help them as they walk through um, anxiety. I, I thank you, God, for just the courage and bravery Christy had to walk through this and to put forth her life in front of others' lives, God, because we know that through that and in that, our testimony becomes um, useful for bringing glory to your name, Lord. And so we pray that that would happen as this book is being released. We thank you, Jesus, for who you are and what you have done for us and pray that that is just seen through this book. It is in your mighty name we pray. Amen. Okay, I'm going to move on to the practical questions. These ones were fun. So um, Leslie asked me, what software did you use when you were typing and writing? And um, did it suggest alternate words or keep you from repeating phrases? Great, great, great question. Grammarly is one of the greatest softwares out there because it's going to help you with um, your grammar, your sentence structure. Um, one of the things that I really struggle with that I'm learning to do better is active voice versus passive voice. And Grammarly will tell you when you've messed up on that. Um, it doesn't, it might've gotten better, but at that time I was writing, it didn't suggest how to fix it. It just told me you're wrong. (laughs) And then WordTune is another really great software that it would help me rewrite the sentence or give me suggestions to get it from, um, 
get, to get it into active voice so instead of passive voice. So that was really a great, those two things, Grammarly and WordTune were super helpful. And then another practical question was, how did you decide what Bible translation to use? That is so good because normally a publisher will have you pick one version and kind of stick with that. And then in the inside cover of all of the credits and publishing information, it'll say author uses you know, NLT version for the whole book. And uh, for me, I'm not good at that. I love to dig into God's word and look at the different versions because it speaks to me in different ways and different versions. So you'll see all throughout my book that I actually credit the the actual version of the scripture within the citations. So I decided to just make sure that I kept track of it every single time. What was your writing process? My sweet husband asked this, but a bunch of other people asked me this question too. What's your writing process, your schedule, your calendar? What Was it hard to stick to it? So I had to complete 55,000 words in about eight months, and I had 13 chapters that I needed to write. So when you do the math on that, that's about 7,000 words a month. Now, I am a very slow writer. So I allowed myself to complete about 1,000 words each time I sat down to write. And sometimes that didn't even happen. So what I tried to do was plan two to three eight-hour work days. Eight hours, okay, every single time. And when I did that, if I did two to three a week of eight-hour work days, then I would hit my goal of 7,000 words per month as I was kind of chunked chunking away at the chapters. So I found it to be really like, okay, what was my word count goal? How was I going to get it done? How many days per week did I need to, to work eight hours to be able to hit that? And then I put that bad boy on my calendar. So if I had a writing day and something popped up, hey, Chrissy, can you go for this? Or hey, can you do this? Or hey, do you have an appointment or whatever? No, the answer is no. I'm sorry. Eight hours that day, I'm writing. And I had to stick to it because I don't have the luxury of being an incredibly fast writer. I, I, I mean, I just, I had to stick to that. Um, I, you know, there were times where I would go away to our family cabin or uh, even a hotel or even after some retreats that we held, I stayed back and I was so grateful for that extended time where I could write. Okay. Uh, okay. A lot of people ask this question too. Do you ever experiencing, experience any writer's block? And if so, how did you deal with it? Well, Yes, that happened to me often. And I also, I found that when that happened, I was forcing an idea or an opinion that wasn't really godly. So I would have to like take a walk, take a break, or just change my writing day to a different day. But when I wrote from the overflow of what God was doing in my life, it just, it came naturally. I don't know how to explain it. It was, it was almost supernatural uh, when I would just tap into what I knew God was calling me to write or share my story. Uh, it, it just came incredibly natural. Uh, the next question, this one came from Andrea. How are you able to narrow your story down to fit into a book? Well, honestly, I credit all of that to the book proposal camp because it helped me outline ex- every single chapter what the chapter was going to be about. And I'm not kidding you. I would sit down to write and I would go back to my book proposal, the outline, and I would look at it and be like, nope, that's in chapter 12, Christy. Don't be talking about that yet. Or nope, that's not yet. That was in chapter one. You're repeating yourself again. So I cannot stress how important it is to have a good book proposal if you want, if you have a dream in your heart to write a book. Uh, This question came from Becky. Did your team help write the study questions or the ready statements in the back? I have an incredible team, but no, they didn't help me with that. I had a dream that when this book hit the world, that it wouldn't just be a book. It would be a study guide. It would be a companion that people could take with them and photocopy and take pictures of and put in their camera rolls so that they could pull it back out and go, oh gosh, I, I remember this ready statement. I remember this scripture. Uh, I, I wanted to allow people to have a study guide that they could that they could sit down with their friends and and maybe have a Bible study over or just a discussion over. So the back of the book is so important to me because I feel like. I don't want you to just stop with the book. I want you to discuss it with other people and ask the hard questions to to yourself that you can journal or to other people and hold each other accountable. So I love the ready statements and I love the discussion questions in the back. My dear Lord Jesus, Father, Holy Spirit, I thank you that you write our stories 
that you're the center and the hero of our story. And I'm grateful for the story that you've written in Christy Bulwer's life and the way that you've used chapters from her story and Nervous Breakthrough. I just pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you would work through the words that have been written and the words that Christy gets to speak in conferences and in podcasts and interviews when she gets to tell that story again to bring glory to you and to help bring hope to all who listen, all who read, all who encounter the message of Nervous Breakthrough. I just thank you in advance, God, for what you're going to do through Christy's testimony and through the way that you've worked life out of dark times. Thank you for turning our ashes to beauty and for turning our hopelessness into hope. I praise you, Jesus. Thank you. In your name I pray. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I know right now we live in a world that's consumed by fear and anxiety. I know that we're walking each day and waking up faced with the troubles of this world. I'm so grateful for the blessing that Christy has been in my life. And God, I wanna take a moment to pray over the launch of Nervous Breakthrough. I know this incredible book is going to be an incredible resource to so many, just like it's been to me. I wanna pray over every heart that's considering purchasing this book. I wanna pray over every heart that's considering purchasing this book and gifting it to somebody they love. I wanna pray over every heart that's considering using this book to equip them in their role to potentially better serve others. Lord, I pray that any heart who's considering opening the pages of Nervous Breakthrough feels the presence of your love, your grace, and your mercy. We know that this launch is in your hands and that you will provide. Lord, let it be your will. Amen. All right. Now the juicy ones, the personal questions. So Jody asked, when did you realize that you were a writer? Or actually a couple of people asked this, like, when did this become like a vocation for you? So I, I think just by natural instinct, I'm a communicator. I love to share stories and bring people along into an experience. I mean, before I even knew Jesus, I did a lot of acting and theater. And I believe God was training me my whole life to be used by him to be a powerful communicator. So now I channel the gifts the Lord has given me into communication and I use it for his glory. So whether it's writing or speaking, I consider myself his ambassador and I guess I'm gonna go wherever he calls me. So there wasn't a particular moment where I just said, okay, now I'm a writer. I think it was just, hey, now you're called to communicate your story in a different, in a different vehicle. Um, this one was asked by several people, is there anything that got cut out of the book during the editing process that you want to share with the readers? Oh, okay. So there, uh, there's a particular self-help teacher who's incredibly powerful and has lots of best-selling books. And I just truly believe that she's putting out very damaging messages into the world. A lot about self-help and hustling harder and you can be the hero of your own story. And there was a part in the book where I called her out by name and uh, I just... I, after getting wise counsel uh, from Mary, my agent, and then also my publisher, we just decided that it wasn't worth it to to rumble like that. It wasn't worth it to call her out. So, um, I mean, I think there could be some legal ramifications too if it wasn't done correctly. So, uh, I just decided to be way more vague and just cut that whole part out. Um, but you can you could probably go to chapter three of the book and find out what I how I made it a little bit more vague. So then we had some questions from Megan, Andrea, Marie, Leslie, Kyler, basically just like, did you have a fear of being vulnerable? Like you put yourself out there in a lot of ways, like, how did you do that? And why did you do that? And then also kind of a follow-up question to that was, how did your family feel about that? Because you talk about your family a lot in, in these stories. So I try to live by the rule that my husband and my inner circle and my children, they know about everything I share before I share it publicly. So my family obviously is very supportive of my struggles and the things that I've been through and they're in full support of me, even if it includes stuff about them. 
So I do have stories about my husband and my kids and my inner circle friends all throughout this book, but they knew about it before I actually, you know, wrote about it. And as far as the fear of being vulnerable, I think the hardest story that I had to share was the suicide part with with the guns. And I guess I just, I still have so much shame around that. And when I have to share that and be super vulnerable, it, it's it's just, it's hard. It's hard to be honest. It's hard to talk about that. Yet, uh, I, I, I just want to share with you all right now, I have a very, very specific prayer about my suicide thoughts. It, and it's that I pray that someone is going to read that and their life is going to get saved. And that's a prayer. And I'm just believing that God will honor that prayer and that there will be someone's life that gets saved because of it. Shelby and Bonnie asked this, during the process, what kept you motivated? Like what kept you going when the the days that the enemy was whispering lies to you? Like what kept you motivated? Well, I, I think the biggest lie I would hear and and honestly, I'm still hearing it today, is that the book's going to be a flop. And then my publisher's going to be disappointed in my sales. My agent's going to wish she never chose me. And that I'm never going to get an opportunity to write another book again. And, you know, I also, there's another kind of undercurrent to that is a lie that I'm just a terrible writer and that I don't belong in the writing arena. And so, what I do is I combat those lies by standing on God's truth. And one that is just kind of circling my heart right now is Philippians 1, 6. And it says, and I am certain, I say it, and I am certain that God who began the good work within me, I, I make it about me on this, will continue his work until it is finished on the day when Jesus Christ returns. And I believe with my whole heart that God helped me write this book. And he was in charge of it the sales of it, who who reads it, what happens is all in his control. And I just have to surrender it all to him. It, this book is God's book, and I'm just the vessel he's using to bring it into the world. So then um, this is kind of leading into the very last question. And, and almost all of you asked me this question, but will you write again? Well, <laughs> Let me tell you something. Writing is not for the faint of heart because it was truly one of the hardest jobs I have ever done. I poured my heart and soul into this and I had to relive really painful experiences and I had to let everyone in into my pain as well. And not to mention just kind of like reliving that and sometimes, you know, walking back through trauma. Uh, it also is a huge mental and energy focus. And, and that's incredibly difficult as, as well. I mean, we live in a world where we're incredibly distracted and I am 100% guilty of that. So the mental focus and energy was just like, whoa, off the charts. And you know, your time is the most valuable asset that you have. So it was an, an huge time commitment for me as well. But with all that being said, Besides committing my life to Jesus, marrying Troy, and giving birth to my beautiful, amazing babies, writing and publishing a book was one of the best accomplishments, is one of the best accomplishments of my life. They say that less than 1% of the world will traditionally publish a book. So with statistics like that, I can only give credit where credit is due, and that's to Jesus. He did this. I just partnered with him to make it happen. So will you write again, Christy? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I have some ideas in my heart, some dreams, some things that I feel pretty passionate about, and I'll let you in. For example, I think it would be incredible to write in the arena of mental health and marriages. Uh, I also feel like I could write into sort of the anxiety and pain that takes place with spiritual abuse uh, in the church. And then also, this is kind of a strange one, but like middle level leadership. And, and here's what I mean by that. Most leadership's books are written by people that have these huge, ginormous, flourishing ministries and businesses. And they're, you know, just like really incredibly successful. And they often kind of miss 
the middle level? Like where it's like you got the starting point, the middle, and then you've got the big accomplishment, right? And I feel like sometimes I have a hard time um, really resonating with these huge corporations and huge leaders because a lot of the stuff that they're teaching, like, isn't the same struggle that I'm dealing with. And uh, so I just thought about what would it look like to write like a middle level leadership book? Uh, so I don't know. Hey, why don't you do me a favor? Why don't you go to pot, uh, just send us an email podcast at fearlessunite.com and tell us like of those three ideas, like what would you be most interested in hearing about? Or maybe if you have another idea, uh, I would I would love to hear it. And honestly, we would just love to hear from you anyway. How is this podcast impacting your life? What would you like us to cover in tips and talks? Because I take that stuff seriously and I would love to hear from you on that. So it's podcast at fearlessunite.com. But what I'd like to do now is just end in prayer because today is a big day. Nervous Breakthrough enters the world. Whew, I just got chills. And I'm so grateful. And I know that the listeners and the people that are going to hear this, they might hear this and 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 just want to know about how writing a book and they might find out and, and go order a copy of this book. I don't know how this book is going to enter the world into people's hearts, but I do trust God with it. So will you pray with me? Father, thank you so much for this journey. Thank you for the amazing questions and the incredible book launch team that has helped make all of this possible, Father. I thank you for the work that you're doing in and through me. And I just pray that I would continue to be surrendered and listen to your voice and remember that this is your book. Father, help um, the people that are going to read it to just have an encounter with you that will change their lives. God, we love you and we know that you have mighty plans for nervous breakthrough. And I can't wait to see and hear the testimonies that come from it. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for listening. If you found this to be helpful, you can find out so much more in my book, Nervous Breakthrough. And guess what? Right now you can order it on Amazon and you're gonna receive a bonus chapter from me where I write about coming off of my antidepressants. All you need to do to get the information is go to fearlessunite.com. You can order the book there and then you'll get the copy of um, my bonus chapter. Also, can you do something for me? Will you help us get the word out about this podcast? I would be so honored if you would share it with your loved ones, rate it, review it, and also be sure to subscribe. And lastly, And I really mean this. We want to hear from you. If you have suggestions or ideas on something that I should cover or a tip that you'd really like help on, please send us an email, podcast at fearlessunite.com. Again, that's podcast at fearlessunite.com. Thank you so much for listening.